Hello and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert and in this screencast we're going to create a Whack-A-Cat game. This is kind of like Whack-A-Mole except I'm going to use the cat sprites that Scratch comes with. So we move this hammer around and I can press the space bar and try to hit as many of these cats in the time that I have left. Oh, there and there. Please note, of course, this is just a game. Don't actually hit cats with hammers in real life. Uh, it, oh, my cat is giving me a horrible look right now while I'm playing this game. Okay, 23. Not bad. So let's see how this game is put together. Click on Create and start up the Scratch Editor. So first, we're going to draw a new sprite by clicking on this paintbrush icon, and this sprite will be for the hammer. Let's switch to vector mode. And I'm going to draw a pretty cheesy looking hammer. Make sure I'll choose the filled in style. I'll select a nice wooden color for the handle. And then a black color for the... Oh. And then a black color for the metal part. And make sure the center of the image is somewhere at the base of the handle. It's really important that you have the hammer facing to the right, because if you look on the info panel for this sprite, eh, might as well rename it to hammer while I'm here, this is what the sprite looks like when it's facing the right direction. So when we have it facing zero directions straight up, we'll want the hammer to be straight up. First thing that this hammer does is at the very beginning of the program, it'll set itself to negative 30 degrees. So let's grab the when green flag clicked block, and then go to the blue motion category and grab that point and direction block and we'll set this to negative 30. We'll also go to the purple look section. We want to make sure that the hammer sprite is on top of everything else that's on the stage. So grab this go to front block and that'll move the hammer in front of everything. So we want this hammer to be in front of the cats. We don't want the cats to be in front of the hammer. So when we click on the green flag, you can see it's now tilted at that angle. And we also want the hammer to follow around the mouse wherever it goes. So I'm going to need a forever loop. And the only thing that goes inside of this forever loop is from the dark blue motion category. It'll be the go to block. And we'll just have it set to mouse pointer. So that way it's forever constantly updating its position to match where the mouse pointer is. So what this looks like is that the hammer follows the mouse around. Next, we want the space key to do the hammer swinging animation. So I'm going to go to the brown events section, grab this when space key pressed, and what we want to do is rotate the hammer to the right by 90 degrees. So I'm going to grab this block and change this to 30, and then have three of these. So you can see now I press the space key and it rotates downwards. Now that doesn't really look like a smooth animation, so I should add some weights in between these rotates. So I'll go to the orange control section, grab this weight one second. One second is way too long. Let's just make this 0 0.1. Now that's a little slow. How about... 0 0.05. That's pretty good. And so once it swings down, we want the hammer to stay in that down position for just a brief instant, maybe 0 0.3 seconds. And then we'll have the hammer rotate itself back up. So go to the dark blue motion category, and grab the turn to the right block, and we'll need three of those as well. And we'll add some more of those weights in between them. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now let's create the animation for those cats popping out of the holes. To do that, I'm going to go to the costume section of the cat sprite, 
And I'm going to go ahead and delete this second sprite. We won't need that. And then what we want to do is convert this to a bitmap image. And I'll explain why in a little bit. I'm going to grab this select tool and select the entire cat and move it up and out of the way for just a little bit. And I'll explain why in a moment. Then click on the ellipse tool and draw a black hole big enough for the cat to fit in. And now before you do anything else, right click on this costume and create a duplicate of it by selecting duplicate. And if you go back to the first costume, now we want to erase the entire cat. We just want this first costume to be just the hole and nothing else. And then go ahead and duplicate that second costume now so that we have one costume that's just the hole and then two costumes that have cats. And for this second costume, I'm going to erase everything except just the ears. So just erase it just like that. And then I can grab the select tool and select all of this and lower the cat ears so it looks like the ears are just poking a little bit out of the hole. In fact, let's make a few more duplicates. How about three more duplicates? And so for the third costume, we want the cat to be a little bit more out of the hole, so I'll just erase everything underneath the eyes. And then use the select tool to select the cat's head and move it right there. And then for costume number four, let's maybe have everything below the head be erased. And move that in position. And for costume five, we can have maybe just the legs be erased. Everything else is outside of the hole. Then for the sixth costume, we can have the entire cat selected, maybe just right there above the hole, like the cat's jumped out of the hole a little bit. And now we need the animation frames for the cat going back inside the hole. We could try drawing them again, but we already have them right here. So select costume number five, and then duplicate that one. And that'll become the new costume seven. So you can see, here's costume 5, where the cat's going a little bit out of the hole. And then costume 6, the cat's entirely out of the hole. And then costume 7, the cat's going back down. So we duplicated costume 5 for that. Now duplicate costume 4. And then duplicate costume 3. And then duplicate costume 2. We don't need to duplicate costume one because we'll just have one costume where it's just the hole. So let's go to the scripts section now. So at the very start of the program, we want the costume where it's just the empty hole to be selected. So go to the look section and grab the block that says switch costume. And we'll set that to costume one. Now we'll enter into a forever loop. And inside this loop, we'll have the cat wait for a random number of seconds and then start playing all of the animations where it's popping out of the hole and then going back in, meanwhile checking to see if it's being hit with the hammer. So the first thing we'll have it do is wait a random number of seconds. So grab that wait one seconds block and then go to the green operator section and grab this pick random one to ten. Instead of one to ten, that's a little bit long, we'll just say one to six seconds. Now go to the orange control section and grab this repeat 10. We'll keep it as 10 right here. We're going to put a next costume block inside of there. Now the number of costumes and the number we have in repeat has to be the same so that we execute 10 next costumes. So it goes through each and every one of the costumes and then it ends up back at the hole. So if we click on the green flag right now to test this out, it's waiting for a random number of seconds. And then the cat pops out. Wow, that was that was pretty fast, actually. We need to slow that down a little bit. We'll add a 
small wait period in there. Let's say about 0 0.075 seconds. So we can click the green flag and test this out. Yeah, that's a little bit better. But we also need code that checks if the cat is being hit with the hammer. So we'll grab an if block and put it in right there. And this is actually a little tricky. So let's think about what exactly is happening in order to cause the cat sprite to think it's been hit. First of all, it has to be touching the hammer sprite. So we'll grab that touching block from the sensing section. But not only that, it has to also have the hammer in that swung down motion. So remember the hammer starts off at negative 30 and it swings to the left by 90 degrees so it'll end up at negative 120. So for the cat sprite right here we need to grab this operators sections equal sign and go back to sensing and there's a block down here that says x position of hammer. This allows us to grab the one of the attributes of a different sprite and use it inside this sprite, which is the cat in the hole sprite. So let's click on the black triangle and we don't want X position, we actually want direction. The direction of the hammer has to be equal to negative 120. So it has to be touching the hammer and the hammer has to be swung down. So we could put one of these conditions into an if block and then put another if block inside that if block for the other condition. There's a different way to do this though. If you click on the green operator section, we can grab this and block. And the and condition is only true if both of these conditions on either side of the and keyword are also true. So by setting it up like this, We can say touching hammer and direction of hammer is negative 120. Then we only need one if block. So before the program execution enters this if block and executes the code here, both touching hammer has to be true and the direction of hammer has to be negative 120. It's not enough for just one of these to be true, both of them have to be true. So in that case, we'll just create a variable that says score and make it for all sprites and we'll change the score value by one and then go ahead and have the cat say ouch and after this repeat block is done the cat has gone back into the hole we'll have the cat say nothing just so that it's no longer saying ouch Having this say blank block will make the speech bubble disappear from the, spr from the sprite. And just one more thing, let's select the stage and add code to that. So the stage itself also counts sort of as a sprite and we can add code here. Usually it's code that we just want to have in general run that's not particular to any sprite. So for here, let's go to events and grab this when green flag clicked. And at the very start of the game, we'll just set the score to zero. And we also want to have a timer that shows how much time we have left. So the game starts off with 25 seconds and then the timer decreases and it stops the game after those 25 seconds have passed. So let's create a new variable called time left and it'll be for all sprites. We'll just set that to 25 at the very start of the program. Now let's enter into a forever loop where inside this forever loop we just wait one second and then we decrease time left by one. So change time left by negative one. That will subtract one from time left. And then inside that loop we constantly check if time left is equal to zero and that's how we know when the program will stop. So if time left is equal to zero then we'll want to go to the control section and grab this stop all. So since this loops forever and ever, and every second time left decreases by 1, having time left start off at 25 means the game will last for 25 seconds. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag, 
and wait for that cat to come out. And uh, waiting, waiting. Oh, and got it. Oh, but that's kind of weird. The score is not one, it's two. So we can test that out again. Oh. Oh, that's really weird. The score is going up by two, even though we only want it to go up by one. The reason that's happening is because this repeat loop is going by pretty fast. I mean, there's just the delay of 0 0.075 seconds in there. The reason that the score is going up by two is because the hammer stays in that swung down position for 0.3 seconds, remember. So that means that there's plenty of time for this loop to go through twice and change the score by one twice. So we only want it to happen once, that first time that we enter this if loop. And we can do that with a new variable. So click on make a variable. We'll say this variable's name can be was hit. And this will be for this sprite only. So was hit will keep track of if we've already changed the score from the cat being hit already. So at the very beginning of this loop, we'll always set was hit to false. And then inside of this if block, we'll set was hit to true. And then we'll have to add yet another part of this condition so that we only enter inside this if block if was hit is equal to false. So I'm going to have to grab an equal sign and grab was hit if was hit equals false. But I only have two sockets for that and block, but fortunately we can just keep adding more and more and blocks for our, our conditions. So I'll just grab this and put that there and then put this in there. All right, so if was hit equals false and the cat sprite is touching the hammer and the direction of hammer is negative 120, then we want to change the score by one and have the cat say ouch. We'll also set was hit to true, so even if we loop around again, this part of the condition will no longer be true. So that means the entire condition will be false and we'll skip the code inside this if block. That's how we can prevent this double scoring from happening. So let's click on the green flag and test this out. Come on, come on, bam. All right, yeah, it only increases by one. That's great. So at this point, I'm gonna just hide this variable because we don't need that displayed. And all we have to do now is just duplicate these sprites so we can have as many of these cats popping out as we want. I'll just keep duplicating these however many you want. Let's space these out more evenly. We can also have a little perspective going on if we make the ones up here at the top smaller and the ones down here larger, so it kind of looks like it's going further away as it goes up to the top. So I'll grab the shrink tool, and shrink this down, say, one, two, three, four, five times. Shrink this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two. Maybe leave this one the same size and just increase this one by one. Make these bigger by three. This one bigger by five. Okay, that's the complete game. We can maybe even make these a little bit more wibbly-wobbly. We'll just rotate this. Maybe make this one kind of sticking out right there, and this one wobbling that way. That's pretty good. Let's test this out. Click on the green flag. All right. We have cats coming out all over the place. This 
this is great. So we have this hammer that's following around the mouse cursor, which makes it easier to move around. We have the space key that tells the hammer to swing down. And in this screencast, we've also learned how to use the and blocks so that we can combine multiple conditions. Really, it's just the exact same if we had three if blocks, each with one of these conditions inside of each other. But it's a little bit nicer to have it all on one line. And then we also went into creating frames of animation with these cats slowly popping out and then going back into the hole. So I hope you found this screencast be helpful. This is Al Swigert reminding you to be kind to animals, and thanks for watching.